was a small boy, my grandmother used to tell me amazing stories about her visits to see the penguins along the coast of Patagonia, Argentina, over a hundred years ago. I never thought that over 50 years later, I would be receiving the prestigious Giuseppe Sciacca Award. I am Pablo Garcia Borboroglu, and I have dedicated my life to study and protect the penguins of the world. I am a marine biologist, researcher at the National Research Council in Argentina, and founder president of the Global Penguin Society. Penguins are excellent indicators of the health of our seas. The oceans are in trouble, and so are penguins. In fact, half of the penguin species are considered threatened. They are mainly affected by climate change, fisheries, pollution, and human disturbance. Through the work of the Global Penguin Society, we help penguins cope with their conservation problems through research, protection of habitat, and education. Together with our team, we have helped protect 32 million acres of ocean and coastal habitat that benefits 2.5 million penguins. Through local and global education actions, over 7,000 children have visited nearby penguin colonies often for the first time in their lives, fostering their connection with nature. Our work benefits penguins, large ecosystems and their wildlife. Moreover, we are contributing to the livelihoods of thousands of people that depend on ecotourism in developing countries. I have dedicated my life to help penguins, people and the entire planet. I'm honored to be here in front of the Colosseum in Rome with Professor Pablo Garcia Borboroglu to discuss about his important work in penguin conservation. Hello, Professor. How are you? Great. Thank you so much for having me here. The pleasure is ours. How and why did you decide to study penguins? What was it that appealed to you about them? So I like to, to share that the first person that ever told me about something called a penguin was my grandmother. Uh, she married my Greek grandfather and came to Patagonia, Argentina. And when I was a small boy, she used to tell me very nice and warm stories about her visits to see the penguins. And that kind of connected me to nature. Uh, but then in, the, in Patagonia, in the 80s, 40,000 penguins died per year due to the oil spills. And I was really shocked about that. And I realized that I had to do something. So I went to the university to have more tools to be useful and one thing brought to the other one uh, and even though I was trained as an academic I was always interested in using the science to provide conservation mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and that's what I've been doing for 33 years now. Great. <laughs> How has climate change, change affected penguins and uh, why is penguin conservation important? So, uh, since there are 18 different species of penguins, four live in Antarctica, but the others live outside, climate change affects them in a different way. In Antarctica, climate change is uh, producing a change and a mismatch uh, into the, the, the formation and the melting of the ice. And that affects the availability and also the, the quality of the food, of the habitat that penguins need to eat, but also to, to breathe. But outside of Antarctica, the main impact is that climate change is affecting the availability of food for the penguins. Penguins need food close to the colonies when the chicks are small because they swim, get the food and come back. Climate change is affecting that distribution so we are seeing an impact on, on, the, on the growth of, of, these, of the colonies. And of course, apart from that, climate change is also increasing the frequency of heat waves. And uh, like uh, three years ago, in one of the colonies in Patagonia, we register a temperature of 44 degrees far, uh, Celsius. Mm -hmm. So penguins cannot cope with that. And we had like at least 660 penguins, healthy penguins that died due to the heat stress. And the last thing that we are registering is that climate change is triggering wildfires. And penguins do not identify the fire as a threat. So they just don't run away and they stay in their nests until they die. 
So, what do you think, what measures can we implement to mitigate climate change? So, we all recognize that climate change is like a long-term uh, phenomenon, right? And even if we start doing things now, we will see the effects in a lot of years. So right now, how can we help our environment and our wildlife, including penguins? So the way we address that is that we work to reduce the impact of human activities so that penguins can have a better chance to cope with the effects of climate change. So improving fisheries, improving oil, uh, the oil um, industry, the maritime traffic, we try to reduce the impact also on wildlife. But also there are many things that uh, human beings can do because when penguins come on land, they are affected by human disturbance and also the introduction of unfamiliar predators. Um, we think that everybody loves and respects penguins, but that's not always the case. So there's a big impact on people maybe visiting or fishing or having fun that don't respect wildlife. So uh, we, do, uh, we have a lot of programs to educate people so they know how to behave with, with, human, uh, with penguins and how to coexist with, with wildlife. But on another note, penguins live in, in the southern hemisphere. Yes. So what is the message to somebody living in Ireland? Japan, you know, since penguins live in the oceans and the oceans connect all the planet, one of the things that are affecting penguins right now are plastic pollution. Penguins get entangled in big pieces of plastic, sometimes they swallow, uh, and those plastics can harm them and kill them. So every single one of us can, can play a role in that, avoiding single-use plastics. We are finding in Patagonia bottles of plastics from China because whatever you throw in the ocean ends up in another place and that can harm a penguin. So it doesn't matter where we live, it doesn't matter what we do, we can do something now by avoiding single-use plastics. That's a great message. And you mentioned education, uh, that you're involved in educational programs. So this is a great segue to my next question. Um, 2020 in Greece marked, was a year that marked the establishment of the first graduate program in animal welfare ethics and law. Uh, this program is offered jointly by the National and Capodistrian University of Athens mm -hmm. and the Hellenic Pasteur Institute. And uh, it's the first and only program of its kind in Greece. Mm. And its aim is to educate scholars on uh, the very complicated issues that uh, define our relationship with non-human animals uh, in, in the hope that this relationship will, be, will improve and uh, ultimately animal welfare will be improved. So I have a threefold question for you. Uh, do you think that it is important for uh, environmental and animal welfare educational programs to be included in the curricula of schools and universities? Uh, the second question is, um, have you noticed a difference between countries that have implemented such educational programs and countries that haven't in terms of outcomes uh, for the environment and for animal welfare? Mm -hmm. And my third question is, um, do you think uh, that we can hope to see some uh, positive changes in terms of how people treat, uh, think about animals and treat them um, in Greece in the future as a result of the uh, activities of the graduates of this uh, program. Excellent. So to answer the, the, the first question, I think it's of really, really important to include that sort of education into the curricula. Uh, one of the tricky things in terms of education is that you don't see the results immediately. So you are investing in the future and sometimes it's very difficult to measure the impact, to have an indicator, but you know it's there and you will see it in the long run. Uh, it's very important to include the environment um, because it doesn't matter. I mean, it's not like sometimes people perceive that you have to be a biologist to, you know, to have an impact. And it's not like that. You can be an engineer, you can be a doctor, you can be uh, an economist and still include that. So having that into the curricula of, of the universities is critical. So we educate and we also enrich the education of our younger generation. They will rule the world in the next five, ten years. So they will have that uh, as something into their DNA. You know? So that, I think that's a great, great impact that, that we'll have. 
Uh, in relation to the second question about the difference between the so w most of the pe most of the penguins live in developing countries except the ones that live in New Zealand or Antarctica so we even see the difference into the lives <laughs> uh, of, of, of those penguins you know because they're affected by like more efficient administrations um, and you do see the difference you do see the difference in the legislation you see the difference into the the um, efficiency in the empowerment of the laws uh, but um, I think it's also a matter of education. You also see the impact of how people behave, you know, because 80% of our wildlife exists, occurs outside of protected area. So you cannot have a policeman next to uh, every single animal so they, they can control the behavior of people. So when you educate people, they can coexist with wildlife, they can respect the wildlife. And it could be better for human beings and also for wildlife. I mean, uh, and it's amazing when you go somewhere in the wild and you are the only person interacting with that wild animal. So it's fantastic to keep on having that sort of interaction as the human population grows. Um, but we need to foster a conservation culture and educate people in, in, in many, many ways. And the third question was, sorry, I forgot now. <laughs> um, what outcomes do you think we should expect to see in Greece in terms of uh, improvements in animal welfare uh, as a result of the activities of the graduates of, of this program in animal welfare ethics and law? I think that is amazing because when you plant the seed mm -hmm. into the education, uh, it's kind of unexpected, the outcomes, because you can see in so many dimensions. You can see it in the, in the thesis, the first like thesis or seminariums that the students will prepare to finish their studies. So you will see that they select more environmental issues, uh, as we said, in engineer, in other things. Uh, then it's interesting because young people educate adults. <laughs> so you will see an immediate impact because this has happened to all of us. I mean, our children or our sons, they go to university, they come home and they share. So you are educating families. You have complete families. I mean, imagine a Christmas party or something like that. They will share with the rest of the family new things about that. So it's a way to kind of, um, how you say, spread out the, the, the message about uh, education. And then you will see that in the laws because you will see that then these people that you are going to educate, they will be the next decision makers. They're going to decide about the future of the Greek environment. And the amazing thing about the environment is that you, you live in a country, that country has a jurisdiction. But when you benefit, the benefit is for all the planet. It's not just for that country. That's why we're facing global issues. And that is why um, we realize that was one of the positive things about the pandemic. We didn't realize before how connected we were. The environment is affecting us all in a good and in a bad way. Whatever we do, it's for all the humanity and for all the planet. Thank you, that was enlightening. Um, do you have a message for the people who are listening to this interview? Um, so I think is that um, my message is more like a kind of human mes message, not, ex not related to the environment. We all have very important things to give. We are all so important, each one of us. We just need to find what we're good at, what motivates us, uh, what is the best thing, what is it that we love, and try from there to contribute. You, to, we enrich ourselves when we help others. It could be helping your friend, it could be helping penguins, it could be helping the environment, or what, whatever you do. And that is a, when you help others, you enrich yourself as well. You avoid depression, you avoid uh, anxiety, and all of those problems that the human beings are having right now. Because when you use your energy to benefit others and leave a legacy, you know, I think the pandemic also put us in a position where we could see death and life. And it's challenging all the human beings to say, okay, what is it that I want to live when I, I, I leave this plan? What is the, the legacy that we can give? So that, that would be my message. <laughs> it is very motivating, thank you. Thank you very much for this interview. Uh, I hope to see you in Greece very soon. Yes. And uh, enjoy your stay in Thank Rome. you, thank you very much for this award. Uh, as I said, we are so, 
honor and, and grateful for this opportunity and also to share and know people like all of you. This is, this is amazing. Thank the you very much. The honor is ours. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>
I am a researcher. I've been a researcher for a long time. We did a lot in terms of habitat protection, but my role, I, I see that I need to dedicate more time into communication because sometimes conservationists is like we keep on talking to the same people that already believe in conservation and most of our planet they've never heard about conservation or they don't know what to do about it so we need to, to send a message yeah exactly and to reach other circles you know stop singing to the choir yeah yeah exactly <laughs> uh, reach other circles entrepreneurs the international communities businessmen politicians uh, international fora so uh, i think in, in terms of communication that's my next challenge we hope that uh, your nomination and uh, your award should be a, a step closer to this. Um, we hope that uh, your line of work and uh, the total life cycle of penguins around the globe will be a, a, a matter of interest for many peoples through all of this. So, once more, thank you so much. Congratulations on, on your reward. And uh, uh, we hope to see the, all the actions of uh, this day to help you move forward and uh, make your uh, past message, let's say past message. Exactly. So I am the one that is, I'm so grateful for this because the, the Shiak Award is a way to legitimate what we do and to tell the world that this is important and also to be in Rome talking about penguins, you know, yeah. talking about oceans. The controversy. Exactly. So, the, so maybe people that never heard about the the challenges that oceans were, were facing. So thank you so much because you are giving me a platform to deliver my conservation message. It is our uh, pleasure and uh, our, uh, most, we are most happy about all this. Thank you very much. Hello, we are here today in the Vatican City for the Giuseppe Sacca Awards uh, ceremony. We have with us Mr. Borboroglu, he is uh, a scientist and he has to prevent uh, penguins in Patagonia. Uh, Mr. Borboroglu, how do you feel about the upcoming award of Giuseppe Sacca? Well, this is really amazing. I'm so honored and grateful for this great opportunity. And also because it means that what I do is important globally. I work on penguins globally, and through penguins I protect oceans, you know. So we work in research, also in protection of habitat, and a lot on education. And our work has also an economic impact, because through ecotourism, uh, penguins generate a lot of incomes for, for developing countries. What's your message for the upcoming uh, ceremony tonight in uh, Saga? My, sorry, my? Your message. Message? Yes. yes. Uh, I think that uh, my message, my main message is that there are a lot of things that we can do individually and it, it is important to have a positive leadership in the world and it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter where you live, you can have a, a very good positive uh, legacy in your life and improve the world for all the people that you know and for all the planet and the humanity. Thank you so much and congratulations for the award. No, thank you so much for this opportunity. Premio Biologia Marina, Premio Internazionale va Pablo Garcia Borboroglu dall'Argentina a premiare il presidente Sergio Santoro.
Presidente di sezione della Commissione Tributaria Provinciale di Roma, buonasera Presidente, buonasera. Uh, leggo la reason for the word. Uh, Associate Professor of Biology at the University of Washington, Marine Biologist and uh, uh, Environmentalist working on the identification and protection of new marine protected areas. Eh, professore associato di biologia dell'Università di Washington, è biologo marino e ambientalista impegnato nell'individuazione e tutela di nuove aree marine protette. Credo che in questo momento storico per noi, che abbiamo bisogno della salvaguardia di questo pianeta, persone così ce n'è bisogno. Complimenti, congratulazioni. Pablo Garcia Borboroglu. Congratulations. No, no, for the photo, the photo with a prize, with a prize, and then okay. the microphone. Thank you very much. I'm going to be brief. <laughs> I'm very honored and grateful to receive this very prestigious award for the, for the work I do to protect penguins and the oceans. Uh, the oceans are in trouble now as never before in human history. They provide oxygen and food and re regulate the weather on the entire planet. So there's a lot of things that we must do, starting by avoiding single-use plastics. Io non parlo italiano, ma voglio intentare. Sono molto onorato e grato per questo premio e mi dà più energia per continuare a proteggere i pinguini, gli oceani e il pianeta. Grazie mille. Il suo italiano è perfetto. It's perfect. Grazie. Grazie mille, congratulazioni. Grazie Presidente. Siamo al...